Throughout the Second World War, there are a number of commandants of concentration camps who were responsible for the deaths of millions. The commandants were rather senior members of the SS who were considered trusted to carry out the efficient and brutal running of sites such as Auschwitz, Bergen-Belsen and Ravensbrück. Many of the commandants lived at the camps nearby with their wives and families. For example, Rudolf Hurst and his wife would live in a villa nearby. But she would later find out about the horrific evils of Auschwitz and she even refused to sleep in the same bed as her husband because of his crimes. One woman who was happy to indulge in her husband's line of work was Ilse Koch, who was a wife of the Commandant of Buchenwald. These two men were sentenced to death at the end of the Second World War, but they were remarkably executed inside the camps that they once oversaw. Join us today as we look at the executions of the SS Commandants inside their own camps. And remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Carl Otto Koch served in the SS in many different capacities, but he then took over command briefly of the Saxonborg camp, and he was an officer in charge then of the Esterwegen concentration camp's guards, and he was also looking after the protective custody site at Lichtenburg. He was a man who Himmler greatly trusted, besides Carl Otto Koch's shady past inside of prison, but he was then moved to what is considered the first concentration camp of Dachau, where he served as an adjutant. Further promotions came for Karl Koch, and he was a commander of the Columbia concentration camp, which oversaw the torture in Berlin, and he was then sent to Sachsenhausen, before he became an SS colonel. But on the 1st of August 1937, he became the commandant of Buchenwald concentration camp, and he remained here for over four years. Buchenwald was one of the largest concentration camps established by the Nazis, and around 280,000 prisoners were held there, and around 60,000 were killed. The camp's conditions were terrible, and they were all forced to complete very hard labour. The camp was originally designed to hold 8,000 prisoners, and the workers were initially to work on the nearby clay deposits, which could be made into brick. Carl Otto Koch was the first commandant, and he lived at the site with his second wife, Ilse Koch, who became known as the Witch of Buchenwald, for her evil and barbarous nature. Most people died there because of the awful conditions, and the inmates were deliberately starved whilst being forced to conduct backbreaking work, and many became very malnourished, and they suffered from disease. They were being worked to death on a daily basis, and there were also many prisoners who were executed on the gallows at the site, and also on the firing range. Carl Otto Koch oversaw the whole site, and was responsible for the behaviour of his staff, such as Walter Gerhard Martin Sommer, who became known as the Hangman of Buchenwald, and he would execute inmates inside of the forest nearby. Summary executions of Soviet prisoners also took place at Buchenwald, with many being shot in the neck. Alongside his wife, Karl and Ilsa, began to create large building projects for their own gain at Buchenwald. For example, he had a large horse riding arena, made for Ilsa, to parade her horses around in. If a prisoner just looked at her during her time exercising the horses, she would order them to be executed immediately. But as they kept building these projects for their own personal gain, they were getting the money from somewhere. Because of this, Karl Otto Koch was investigated by the SS and the Nazis for embezzlement, fraud, drunkenness and even murder. He was moved from Buchenwald to Meidenek during this time, but was later sacked after 86 prisoners escaped under his watch. But an investigation was already underway into his affairs, and the spending of the Kochs attracted the attention of SS Obergruppenführer Josias, Prince of Waldeck and Pyramont. He was looking at the death list, but he saw the name Walter Kramer, a doctor or nurse at Buchenwald. But Kramer had treated the prince, and because of this he looked into the affairs of the site, and found that Carl Otto Koch and his wife were embezzling money from the Nazis. Any property or wealth confiscated was deemed to have been property of the Nazi state, and for this he was a man who was stealing from Hitler's pockets. A full-scale investigation was launched, and the embezzlement was discovered, as well as the orders Karl Koch had gave to execute prisoners at the site. They had became increasingly and hugely wealthy from their work at Buchenwald, and they both were arrested by the SS in 1943. They were charged with the crimes, but Karl Otto Koch was sentenced to death, and was said to have brought shame and disgrace on the SS and himself, and for this he was to face the ultimate punishment. Karl Otto Koch was imprisoned, and was considered a man who was a disgrace to the SS, which was shocking. There were others at Buchenwald who were convicted, including his wife, but he was then, as the war was coming to an end, sent back to Buchenwald. 
he was sent by April 1945 back to the very concentration camp that he was in charge of, and he would become one of the death toll inside of it, despite the fact he was responsible for so much of it. As the war turned against the Germans, and the complete collapse of the Nazi state was on the horizon, on the 5th of April 1945, a hastily arranged firing squad was gathered of SS officers. It was time for Carl Otto Cox's execution. His identity was confirmed, and he was paraded in front of the executioners, and he was told to stand against a wall. A blindfold was placed around his eyes, and the firing squad then aimed at him, and they received the shout to fire. They shot their rifles straight into Carlotta Cock inside the very site where he had caused such horror and misery. But as mentioned, he wasn't the only one who was sentenced to death and executed inside of his own concentration camp. Rudolf Hess, like Koch, had served during the First World War, and he then joined the Nazi party, and he became good friends with Heinrich Himmler. He joined the SS in 1934, and came to admire Himmler more than Hitler. He was assigned to Dachau in 1934, and he became a block leader, and then in 1938 he was made the assistant to Hermann Baranowski at Sachsenhausen. Whilst he was here, he was in charge of the execution squad, and he was responsible for executing hundreds of people himself, and Hearst would then finish them off with a pistol shot to the head. But he was then tasked by Himmler to research the area of Auschwitz in Poland, to create a huge concentration camp, and he made it his task to do things differently, and to create an efficient concentration camp, which would exterminate as many people as possible. After the building of the site, Hearst became the commandant, and he lived there with his wife in a villa nearby, and their five children, and his wife did not really understand what was happening, and the specific line of work her husband was doing. Each day thousands of people were being killed inside the gas chambers, and her husband was ultimately overseeing this. He was also the commandant responsible for the other guards, and they would administer horrific torture inside Block 11. He began to experiment with the most efficient methods of killing, and he then settled on gas and inside the gas chambers of Auschwitz, it's believed that over one million people died. He later said of the killing, Technically it wasn't so hard, it would have not been hard to exterminate even greater numbers. The killing itself took the least time. You could dispose of 2,000 heads in an hour. But it was the burning that took all the time. The killing was easy. You didn't even need guards to drive them into the chambers. They just went in, expecting to take showers. And instead of water, we turned on poison gas. The whole thing went very quickly. Hearst was later dismissed from Auschwitz, as it was alleged she had an affair with an inmate, but he then returned to oversee the extermination of 430,000 Hungarian Jews to be killed in 56 bloody and barbaric days. 10,000 people were being gassed each day, and there were not enough people to deal with the bodies in the clean-up. He was finally sent to Ravensbrück before he went on the run, as the Second World War came to an end. His wife had been arrested, and she later told the authorities he was living under the name Franz Lang, and after he was captured he was beaten by soldiers. He tried to consume cyanide, but this did not work. He was called to testify as a defence witness at the Nuremberg trials, and he said, I commanded Auschwitz until the 1st of December 1943, and estimate that at least 2.5 million victims were executed and exterminated there by gassing and burning, and at least another half a million succumbed to starvation and disease, making a total of about 3 million dead. This figure represents around 70 or 80% of all persons sent to Auschwitz as prisoners, the remainder having been selected and used for slave labour in the concentration camp industries. Including amongst the executed and burned were approximately 20,000 Russian prisoners of war, who were delivered at Auschwitz in Wehrmacht transports, operated by regular Wehrmacht officers and men. The remainder of the total number of victims included around 100,000 German Jews and greater numbers of citizens from the Netherlands, France, Belgium, Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Greece or other countries. We executed about 400,000 Hungarian Jews alone at Auschwitz in the summer of 1944. He later revamped his estimates to how many he killed to around 1.5 million, but was sentenced to death in 1947 for being a man responsible for the killing capacity of Auschwitz. Those who had been prisoners of the large concentration camp petitioned to the courts and the local authorities to allow Rudolf Hearst to be executed on a specially built gallows within the fences of Auschwitz. They believed it was proper for him to be executed in the very site that he caused so much suffering. This was allowed, and a specially built gallows was made to hang the former commandant. It was built by former POWs, and also had a trap door, 
and on the day of his execution no one was admitted into the grounds of Auschwitz unless they had a special pass. There were armed and uniformed guards everywhere and Hurst was brought to the site at 8am and he was taken to the commandant's office. There he had a cup of coffee and was briefly held in a holding cell. At 10am he was led out to the gallows and was said to have been calm and almost strutting. He walked down the camp street and with his hands handcuffed behind his back he came to the gallows. The executioners helped him climb onto the stool before the noose was tied around his neck and secured. The hangman then pulled out the stool from underneath him and the hearse was left hanging. He was pronounced dead 30 minutes after he was left to hang. Both Carl Otto Koch and Rudolf Hearse were two men who were commandants of concentration camps and they were responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands. They were two men who were notorious for their evil treatment and barbaric policies which condemned many. But they were brought to their former camps to experience their final minutes of life. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.